Okay, how do one assess genomics? Uh, what is genomic processing? There are a lot of different technologies. Uh, I will not go in, in any depth here. That would be specific other type of tutorials. But I do want to mention a, a few, few type of analysis. And, uh, and you can list here, there are many of them that go from the DNA level to the RNA level to the protein level and to, to, to the metabolome level. And, uh, and these technologies um, then uh, uh, mirror biological events or capture and study biological events, uh, which is also depicted here. Um, what I'd just like to say is that the gene expression profiling analysis over microarrays or, or now uh, is moving more over into uh, uh, sequencing technology as that has become so much cheaper. Uh, so the analysis of tr uh, transcription, of transcriptional both profile on, on uh, uh, mRNA uh, it is really, it was paving the way and the, the examples that, that sort of drives the field uh, is, uh, is derived primarily from studies uh, uh, on, on the RNA level and doing transcriptomics. Uh, so uh, different ohms besides the genome are, are analyzed in toxic genomic studies. Uh, I think that is probably very evident. And as I just mentioned, the transcriptome uh, on the RNA level uh, then uh, is where it's sort of paving the way for, for much of the other omics studies uh, 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 within toxic genomics. And uh, listed here is also the uh, epigenome. This is a chromatin state that, that also uh, epi means that it's about uh, and, and regulating uh, transcriptomes. And, and we have proteome and we have metabolome. And uh, within TalksBank, we do have the interest to, to integrate various types uh, of uh, uh, omics analysis. And uh, that is actively ongoing. So um, another key aim of uh, toxic genomics is biomarker discovery. Uh, and naturally, this is from, from, uh, for, for, for this project, the Sarat project, and the, uh, and the to and TalksBank work. Uh, this should, uh, has an emphasis of, of uh, in vitro models as the overall idea is to replace uh, animal experiments in certain contexts. And shown here is just some text about what a biomarker is. And this is some kind of characteristic that should measure and evaluate uh, and be an indicator of something that you want, would, would like to study. This could be normal biology, but of course, if toxicology has a strong association to pathological processes on the cell or, or organ level. And, and, and that's, that's, and that is what that, and some, somewhere along the line, this very broad study of, of uh, omics information, trying to get a grip or, or, or at least measure everything that goes on in a cell. Um, uh, very often uh, it has the ultimate aim of looking for the magic bullet, as, as one usually says, and, and um, a biomarker that could be, be, a, be a typical measure and tell us if something is wrong or not is it, a, a very strong aim for, for the work. Uh, and a biomarker uh, or biomarker signature has to be very accurate and, and predictive. And this means it also has to be sensitive. In this case, it uh, emanates out of, of tumor studies, these definitions. But, but it means that, uh, that it, uh, it shouldn't say that a chemical is toxic, that it's not chemical. And it also should be, be uh, saying that, uh, that this is not dangerous for, for, and this is a very inert agent or chemical, and that you can't be that way either. It should be true or positive in this case. Um, cell lines then need to be studied, uh, and, uh, and essentially what, what is done, you compare an unexposed cell line to an exposed cell line. You do some kind of gene expression analysis typically, and this is for example for transcriptomics. You analyze it with those uh, 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 tools that were, met, were, were indicated in the system's biology cycle, and you can get a biomarker signature or a single gene and, and uh, 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 being in, uh, implicated as a marker for uh, whatever the cells were exposed to. And, and then, of course, one has to always go to test. There, there's a lot of protocols needed 
uh, which are um, termed uh, training and validation and so forth, in, particularly in large omics studies where you get millions of data points, then you will always have a chance of false discovery. Yeah, so so um, that that something is indicated to be changed when you measure many things. So so uh, this field of omics and uh, systems biology need need bio bioinformatics uh, uh, tools and bioinformatics approaches to it for analyzing the results. And part of that is is uh, uh, of course dealing with the data and also see whether whether uh, there there is relevance for for the outcome in animal or humans. Okay, so um, how do we handle uh, toxic and omics data? Well, uh, there 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 are a lot of ways to interpret that, and and a very important part of of um, of, de of understanding uh, uh, omics results uh, is to uh, to process them versus the gene ontology. The gene ontology is a vocabulary, is a language to describe essentially what goes on in the cell. Biological processes, uh, cellular components and molecular functions are, are key, key groups uh, in the gene ontology. So for example, if you do a transcriptomic analysis, and uh, this really covers um, at least half or, or maybe even more of all the 22,000 transcripts that we think right now uh, constitutes the, the transcriptome, uh, then, then this can be sorted um, uh, based on the gene ontology in various programs, uh, which, which are important. And I'll come back to one program called IncroMap that is of uh, interest to ToxBank. And uh, these other programs uh, listed here are, are, um, are key to uh, other means of, of um, interpreting of this rich information and, uh, and uh, uh, depicting it or, or um, sort of analyzing it to the, to the ontology or gene ontology level. So that's very important, and you also there are also uh, uh, some reference in here that you can you can go to. But but to go to these websites is a good way to understand more about this, and you can have this type of uh, three representation where you have the ontology in this case, and you have a biological process, and then you can the, the data then with with the color information uh, can imply that one part of an ontology is more active than another part, and so forth, and so forth. And not to dwell on very long, but uh, uh, 10 years ago or so, then, then the technology was uh, for transcriptomics was based on, on robotics technology and microarray technology. And uh, 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 this slide is in here only to say that, that uh, the omics technologies and the transcriptomics then being the forerunner, as I've said, has matured into a very controlled and functional science. Uh, these are just references to uh, <clears throat> articles and studies where, that involve many, many groups, um, uh, most of them in the United States, but also uh, other places uh, uh, global, globally, globally of, of global activity, have uh, found that, that uh, microwave platforms are really uh, reproducible and one technique uh, uh, is fine for the other and you can combine the data. And there's been various phases of this microarray quality control um, um, project that uh, is now into a third phase, actually, where they're analyzing sequencing. Uh, and, and, and the whole idea here, of course, is with, with this broad technology, I mentioned the risk of false discovery when you measure thousands and thousands of data points, uh, is that you should minimize that and that there should be a good chance to to really trust the data and, and this has been quite expensive technology and is becoming no longer very expensive um, depending on your, your horizon there. But, um, but um, um, anyway, it's, uh, it's uh, is a matured science and, uh, and it's very clear that uh, you don't, do not need many, many duplicates or, or technical duplicates uh, uh, today to uh, embark on omics uh, analysis and then to, to get trustworthy data. 
Here's an omics analysis workflow, probably very obvious to some degree. You need to have an uh, experimental design or have a question. You have to choose a platform uh, or, 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 or a technology rather today, whether you want to be on the protein level or metabolome level or so forth, and, and decide on, on your questions and so forth. Um, a very important part of, of ToxBank is that we do have data warehouse and that uh, we have uh, selected so-called uh, gold compounds. And uh, in that discussion, um, uh, one needs to be uh, also aware of the fact that chemicals can deteriorate and so forth. And is a very important part of doing um, toxicology uh, generally to know that you have, you have optimized your uh, experimental uh, work by having fresh reagents and so forth. And, and listed here are some aspects that one needs to consider for, for, uh, for chemicals when you study them. Uh, the example here is transcriptomics data. And there is, um, once you've done your, this in, in a chip technology, which is you, you use the mi microarray and the FMMatrix technology, which has been a, a golden standard in the field. Yeah. And, and uh, there are aspects there. Uh, this is a this is described very much uh, in manuals uh, from 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 uh, the producers of these technologies, uh, where you control the, the the raw data and you normalize and you evaluate it and you then analyze it for for differential expression and get uh, uh, the differentially expressed uh, uh, genes differentially uh, expressed genes listed. And then, uh, then there is this um, um, thing that I've hinted on by uh, talking on the gene ontology. You need to do a computational interpretation. You need to find those ontologies maybe which are, are overrepresented and uh, which sets of genes that are rich for their variety of techniques. I'll touch a bit on that as well as we move on. And uh, eventually you can get into a biological interpretation. Um, there's ways to analyze this. And the bioinformaticians' work uh, is very often uh, uh, involves these types of clustering analysis, and uh, usually this is coupled with uh, with heat maps. And uh, uh, this is uh, something that the bioinformaticians deals with all the day, uh, uh, using R and bioconductor, for example, as one means. There are multi-experiment viewers. There are ways to visualize all the all these complicated results and to see whether <coughs> certain findings are, are coupled or clustered together and heat maps are often generated where green uh, essentially means that something is a, it has a lower uh, reduced expression and red usually means that it's an increased expression. So, uh, so this is something that one we, there will be tutorials and, and training for uh, other tutorials to go in detail on how this is done.